Hey everybody, welcome back to another exciting episode of Tackle Productions. Today I'm Bancroft being joined by Jimmy yes, once sir. again. And as you can tell by the thumbnail, we got another baby deck profile for you. So like always, click those buttons, they're there for a reason. Jimmy, let's get into it. Alright, so I decided to play baby again because baby is just my favorite. This is my favorite deck in the game, it's my favorite character. I just wanted to come back to it after uh, after a couple sets and see what I can do new with it. Uh, I do have a new build of this deck. M might see that next week. It is dramatically different from any other baby deck that I played, but it, it relies on a ruling that currently is not in place, uh, and it makes the deck not work in the current rule book. So hopefully uh, I will get confirmation from Bandai and the other judges that I've been talking to uh, so that I can play the deck and explain the ruling. Um, so we'll start off with the baby leader. So if you don't know what he does on play, he searches out and plays the planet Tuffle. You have to play the French ones. If you don't, you might as well just not play the deck. Uh, on attack he draws one and the evolve draw two at four or less life. On the backside, he has uh, Overlord, so choose a servant, place the bottom of the deck, draw one card, auto draw a card, and then activate main. You can search top three of your deck, add one counter to your hand, place the rest at the bottom, and then place one card from your hand at the bottom of the deck. So great for setting up uh, cards for the um, to see later on in the match. Uh, it's just a solid leader overall. And Planet Tuffle is the real star because it's a field card that reduces the uh, counter cost of all of your mono blue counters by one that are five or less. Then activate main, you can strike a life and then choose one card in your uh, hand and place at the bottom of the deck. So you don't get really any draw, but you get to um, keep the quality of cards in your hand high. And plus it's a self-awakener if you're in a uh, situation where your opponent does not want to awaken you. So getting on into the deck, it's blue and it's baby, so you obviously run the baby unison. Uh, I find myself a lot of the times not even playing this card, that it's either a charge target or a bottom deck pitch target for one of my effects. The plus two is really nice, but the minus five has gotten so telegraphed at this point that it's like... If I just do that, then my opponent's not going to bother countering because they don't want to see the big monkey. So very rarely do I actually put him out here. Uh, if I do, it's just become a lightning rod because most people are scared of that minus five. Uh, so he's basically just a plus, a plus two draw and a lightning rod for the rest of the deck. And since I do not play him a lot, I only run two of the Super Saiyan trunks. This card is absurd. Bounce any card back to the hand, um, barring deflect. Just It's a ridiculously good card, but I only run it as a two of because I very rarely get to play him for free because, like I said, I rarely play the unison. And, you know, there's been matches where I've just paid five for him and it just doesn't matter. Like, it's good enough to pay five for it. Obviously, Dimension Magic. Don't need to say much else. Uh, Revenge Big Bang Attack. This is just an upgraded Dimension Magic for the deck. Uh, I was running four. I don't know what happened to my fourth one. Uh, but if you have four, run four. If not, you can get away with three. I did completely fine with three all night. Four negates. Baby the Body Snatcher. He is uh, two shot negate. He's reduced by one. And he untaps an energy on play. And he's Overlord, so you can get Overlord on your, uh, on your early turns before Awakening. Uh, which is really nice because you also run Bula, who is also a uh, one-drop negate. She does not untap an energy, but she is Servant. So, so she gains plus 10 and becomes a 15k beater, which is fantastic for one energy. And then you can pitch her to the bottom of the deck with Baby. And easy peasy draws, easy peasy damage. Two Mafuba because paying one for Mafuba is absurd. Don't need to say much else about that. And then Mechiorp, it's the star of the deck. He becomes a one-drop negate that untaps an energy, and he's just a 15k body. He doesn't have Servant, so he can restand and swing and stay a threat on the board until your opponent decides to remove him. Again, you have to run the French ones. If you don't, just don't play the deck. Uh, don't ignore this one. A new card to the deck and has been fantastic all night, Chilled's Army Reinforcements. So it's a two-drop. Uh, counter. He does not reduce because it's a specified two cost, 
So you're going to be paying two for them if you want to hard cast them. But if your life is at five or less, you can just strike a life and play this card for free. And it negates the attack, and then you get to play a uh, Chilled's Army token that's 10k and has blocker. And of course, you got to have the nice tokens. Shout out to Matt for hooking me up with the Matt Hardy and uh, Undertaker. And then, of course, you got the Obama tokens as blockers, because Obama's going to protect us all. He's the homie. Uh, so, always got to have your good tokens on you. And also, this card is just ridiculously good. I only run it as a 2-of because I don't ever really want to pay 2 energy for it. And this is, I find this is best played when you're at 5 life. So it puts you in awakening range. And it basically just shuts down whatever turn. Because most of the time your opponent's not going to have more than like 3 attacks on uh, the turn you have 5 life. Topo Gohan. Or Zamasu's Pose Gohan. Whatever you want to call him. He's counter attack. Uh, he has Servant, and then Auto when he is played. If your opponent wants to attack, they have to bottom deck one card. Just fantastic. Since you're probably going to be negating every single attack, you play this first, and if your opponent even decides to play through it, they're just still going to be negating, and there's going to be pitching cards for literally no reason. So it's a fantastic card. Uh, you will notice that I do not run Heroic Prospect in the list, because I just see this card as a better version of Heroic Pro Prospect. In my opinion, I know Heroic Prospect is a fantastic card, it just hasn't done a lot for me in any deck. Uh, so this has just been my preferred card. And of course he's not a one drop, but two energy in this deck is fine. We're also not seeing a lot of uh, going tall decks on a local Yeah, exactly. We're not seeing a lot of decks where Heroic Prospect is really putting in any work. Uh, in the meta, of course, there's Red Broly and Dark Broly. So Heroic Prospect is a much better card. Uh, but I would be paying two for Heroic Prospect anyway because I don't ever really play a Unison in my list. Um, and honestly, I think if Heroic Prospect wasn't a card, we would see this card being played in a lot more decks, because I do honestly believe this card's worth 3 energy to play out anyway. Uh, because it's a 25k body, you know, fantastic. Another fantastic card, Vegeta Reddit Rumble. Uh, he's blocker, counterattack, and he's pretty much the same thing as Gohan, but they hit their energy instead. Uh, and just absurd amount of value in this card when you play it and it actually sticks and doesn't get countered in any way uh which in some cases is a great thing because it'll get that counter out of their hand uh so that you can on your turn play your abuni or play a more aggressive route on your turn um but even if your opponent decides that they want to blow up the energy you can just block with this right after and make that attack null and void just absurd value for three energy in this deck a new card in the list that has been absolutely amazing. So Toa, the next move, it's a blocker, and you can pay one on the auto that when you activate the Overlord skill, you can play her out and look at the bottom of the deck, and if there's a Servant card that's an energy cost of 3 or less, it's played with its skills negated for the turn in rest mode. So it just gives you a reoccurring value off of your Servant cards, so... Uh, you know, activate Servant, draw your card, play it back out. Next turn, you have another card to pitch for Servant. It's just absurd value. And this is also the card that enables a really cool chain that you will see in the next iteration of the deck. Uh, it's just due to the ruling on when a card becomes a skillless card uh, due to skills negated. Once that is confirmed and it's changed, and the rulebook has been updated. I will try to get that deck uh, out here because it's such a cool deck. And this card has been fantastic for it. We got Baby, Diabolical Parasite. Uh, I was not a big fan of this card early on. And this card has put in so much work tonight. So it's a counterplay. Uh, you switch one of your blue energy to active mode. So he's pretty much a one drop, essentially. And he pitches a four or less being played to the bottom of the deck. And he also has the overlord skill, which is just insane. And 19k body. Uh, fantastic in the early game. Fluff's over here dancing for me. I appreciate it, Fluff. One of these days. Fluff, get over here and show your shirt. No. So, show your shirt, Fluff. Nope. Uh, yes. Fluff's a slut. Uh, hit Deadly Vanguard. This card is absurd. Uh, so he's already a three drop due to his own skill, and it becomes a two drop in this list. And playing this card for two energy is disgusting. Uh, so he counterplays a five or less coming into play, and then when he is played, 
his auto will bounce a five or less that's already existing on the field. Uh, so this card can be played to get around deflect on cards with five or less because you counterplay, you cannot target the card with the counterplay skill, but then you can bounce it with the auto. Uh, so this card will hit pretty much everything in the game that's five or less unless it has deflect and barrier, which is kind of rare. Uh, and for two energy, if you don't get to resolve both effects, it's still worth two energy. Absurdly powerful, 15k body, still going to put another attacker on field. Just so, so good. Two counter monkeys. Um, since I don't, I rarely minus five on the unison, I will at most play two in a game. Uh, most of the time it's just one, 99% of the time it's just one, uh, because paying five for this card is still fantastic. And it can really catch your opponent off guard because they're going to expect you to want to minus five so you can cheat out this card for cheap. But when you just pay five for it, when they don't expect it, that can snag a game right there immediately. Uh, so got to play that mind game. You got to know your matchups uh, and determine whether paying five energy is good for it. You never really want to tap out in this deck, so uh, try not to play it on turn 5, on turn 6, play it all day. Fantastic. Uh, but you can counter play 7 or less, or you can counter counter, which is usually what this card's used for. And then on play, you draw a card and then bounce a card to the bottom of the deck and learn barrier. Insanely good card. Absurd good card. <laughs> Three of Boonie, uh, just no, good blue staple, great aggression. Uh, if you're risky, you can play this on turn four and tap out and get lucky on the activate main. Uh, I would not suggest that because you can get put in a very bad position if you do not hit that top and you have to rely on sparking out of D magic to untap energy or your Zeno super combo to restand in energy. Uh, but deflect. Plays three tokens, cannot be KO'd while tokens are in play, so he's really difficult to remove and gives you a lot of aggression. I'll see you guys later. Later. Good one, brother. So for our super combo spread, two Vegeta, uh, quality super combo, fantastic. Drawing two is never a bad thing. One Zamasu, uh, because I find myself in every single blue deck or yellow deck that I play, I find myself in every single time I'm like, I wish I had at least one Zamasu in the list, so I just always immediately add one. And he puts in a lot of work. Um, and since most of the time you're not entering the battle step, you're only probably going to use one or two super combos a game. So having a good spread of them and gives you the options in the toolbox is a lot more favorable over just having consistency on seeing one particular one. And for the final one, uh, you play Zeno. Uh, he's a one-drop cantrip. If you do find yourself on turn three having the unison in hand and you want to play it, uh, you want to keep this in hand so that you can restand an energy and defend yourself. Because as soon as you tap out, your opponent's going for the throat. Uh, so if you are more keen on playing the unison, I would suggest pushing up to a two Zenos and keeping one Vegeta draw uh, just so you're able to consistently get that untap on your turn three if you want to tap out or in the case of you want to play a Boonie on turn four and you're not lucky enough to hit the activate main play the Zeno so you can uh, you know protect yourself so I have a myriad of one ofs in this list one Ultra Instincts on Goku uh, just fantastic card. It's always been a good card. Good card. I, I'm not, I've never been a fan of this card. Uh, but it's fantastic in the list because it's a three drop. Did you just say this card is good and it's always been good? I said air quotes. Okay. You missed that part. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I I, re I realize why this card's good. Uh, it just became a meme at our shop around the time that this card was ran in every single deck because it was shoehorned into literally everything because people would not shut up about draft box for cards not that good. But in this deck, it's great because it's a three-drop. It was great when Zeno button was a card. Yeah, it was, I mean... <laughs> Give me my card back. Uh, so... Baby, say Power Absorbed. Uh, it's kind of play for a two drop. Don't ever really play it for that. You play it for the activate main. 
Uh, if your leader card is a baby card, you can choose one of your opponent's battle cards, negate its skills, and return it to your opponent's hand. It has to be greater than, your, than their energy cost. Uh, again, at our locals, there's not a lot of decks that are playing big cards for cheap, uh, but in matchups like uh, like Red Broly, this is good to put out there because you can bounce a card and then use one of your counterplays like Hit or um, your uh, um, the baby Diabolical Parasite to hit the card that they're playing for free off their leader so you completely kill their chain for essentially one energy because the baby untaps an energy. Um, yeah. Great card. I don't ever use it for the counterplay. I only use it for the activate main, so I would not run more than one or two in a list. One for me because I was just trying to shoot one random stuff in the list that I like. One Champa. I should run the French one, but I wanted the deck to be shiny. Uh, Self-explanatory. One Kami. Uh, one Drop Cantrip. It has Deflect. And... Uh, at our locals, there's a lot of big, wide, spammy decks that are playing low-cost battle cards. So the Activate main is fantastic on there. You pay two, wipe the field of four or less, both you and your opponent's field, and it ignores barrier. Uh, so just insanely good card if your locals is playing a lot of, like, wide field spammy decks. Are we even playing it? For our boss monsters, run Foo the Dark Banisher. Triple attack, over on 8 for 4, and then anytime your opponent wants to activate a skill, they have to warp one card from their hand. You will build a massive field if you're constantly negating your opponent's attacks, and they're all 15k bodies, so they are threats in the late game. And then you drop this, and it is just an absurd amount of cards your opponent has to drop if they want to activate their skills. Or, I've just dropped this card before, and the opponent scoop before. They're even at 4 life, and they're like, yeah, I can't do anything about that. I'm not getting through the field. Absurdly, absurdly good card. I think you should run this card in any deck that you can. If you're going to get to turn four, run this card. So, French Fu, uh, over Realm 10 for six. Bancroft shaking his head. I was scratching my chin, but all right. Yeah, whatever you say. Uh, double Frappe, just like Double Frappe Champa. There you go for the homies that have been around for a while. And then he blanks all of your opponent's non leader card skills uh, until the end of the next turn. It just. This card is secret rare status. That's what it should be. Uh, it should have the ultimate tag, but you're only ever going to play one in the game, so everybody only runs one. Uh, just absurd, 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 absurd card. That's my favorite word right now. And Baby Hatch. This card's banned. Uh, it got banned on April Fools. Uh, I'm still keeping the joke going. I don't have Drip Coup on me, or I would be playing Drip Coup. Uh, but here you go. Um, what you can do really is just if you don't have baby hatch, you can just play an Obama token in its place. It does the exact same thing. Cool. Appreciate it, Jimmy. Yeah. Like always, there's buttons. Click them. They're there for a reason. Jimmy, last words? I have nothing to say to you. Fair enough. That's not different. So with that being said, thank you all for tuning in. Like always, read your cards, know your plays, and fluff out.